this initiative creates immunity for those marijuana impaired drivers. Some big red flags over the ballot initiative that would legalize recreational marijuana in Arizona. Investigative reporter Morgan Lowe shows us how it could make it nearly impossible to prosecute people for driving under the influence of pot. Let's say I've been drinking and I'm driving down the road and I get pulled over. The police officer approaches my car. Hello, I'm going to ask you to step out of the car, please. He says that because he wants to perform a field sobriety test. But here's the deal. Legally, I don't need to cooperate. Officer, I'm going to respectfully say no to the field sobriety test, and I'm not going to answer any questions. But you have my permission to draw my blood if you believe that I'm impaired. Now, if that BAC comes back at above a .08, I'm going to get prosecuted for DUI even without the field sobriety test. But if the recreational marijuana initiative passes under the same scenario, I'm going to respectfully say no to the field sobriety test. If I had marijuana in my system, I would most likely get off scot-free. I don't think we would even be able to charge cases that were submitted under those scenarios. Maricopa County Attorney Bill Montgomery is an outspoken critic of the recreational marijuana initiative. He says the problem is one specific provision. This provision protects marijuana using drivers unlike any other substance using driver within the state of Arizona. On the first page of the initiative, it states driving while impaired by marijuana remains illegal. But 13 pages in, it states a person may not be penalized by this state solely because of the presence of metabolites or components of marijuana in the person's urine, blood, saliva, etc., etc. That means a blood test alone won't be enough to convict someone of driving under the influence of marijuana. To say that driving while impaired remains illegal and then deny me the evidence to prove it negates that very claim. It's empty. Other states with recreational marijuana laws on the books set a limit of five nanograms per milliliter of THC in a blood test for a marijuana DUI, similar to our .08 standard for DUI. Anything above that and you are legally impaired. That standard does not appear in Arizona's initiative. Why don't we have that limit here? Uh, you know, we, we looked at trying to do that. The problem is that the science just isn't there yet. Uh, Ryan Hurley helped write Arizona's initiative. He says nobody really knows how much THC someone has to have in their system to be impaired. So it would be unfair to set a limit that may not be accurate. It does sound like it's making it a little harder to prove impairment. No, so what it's, what it's doing is taking away the, the, uh, the ability to say, you've smoked marijuana any time and you've driven, you're automatically guilty of a, of a DUI. Law enforcement officers say what it actually does is take away a critical piece of evidence, the blood test. Specific Bill Montgomery puts it this way. Because you could say uh, residential burglary remains illegal, but then if later on you say you can't use fingerprints, you've just taken away the means by which I can prosecute people and hold them accountable for that. Ryan Hurley argues that the blood test isn't useless. He says prosecutors would just need to get an expert to testify in court that the THC in a defendant's blood is at a level high enough to cause impairment. The problem is none of that appears in the initiative. Scene. Okay, Morgan, 